<laughs> Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late today. We had a few technical issues, but I hope you guys are all having a fantastic Sunday. I did. I took half a day off, actually, and I went with my family and we went to a car show, which was awesome. <clears throat> all right. So today, one, we get to announce the winners from our webinar. As promised, there were a couple of giveaways, and today we get to tell you who won them. So Rashad won the Done For You program for free. So he will be, he has joined us, and we'll be going through the Done For You Atlas Agency Launch Lab program for free. For the brain spotting session access, we would like to give that away to Jade. So we will be contacting you to make sure you get access to our brain spotting sessions with the rest of our students. And then I go high level snapshot winner is, drum roll please, Doug Holly. Doug Holly, you have won access to our go high level snapshots that we provide all of our students with. So I hope that you guys really, really enjoy this, um, this access. I hope that it really gives value to you and your agency life. And if you have any questions about it, please, please reach out and we will do what we can to get you started. All right. So today, now that we've done the exciting part, let's talk about niches. All right. We all kind of have questions like, what niches should I prospect in? Should I niche down? How many employees make an ideal business? What founding date should I be looking for in a business? Um, who in the business should I be contacting? These are all questions that as agencies start being set up, we start to have. And anybody's going to give you a very, very different answer to this, okay? There is no right or wrong answer. But I'll try and cover these topics and give you some recommendations from our combined experiences here at Atlas Agency Launch Lab so that you can make an informed decision for your own agency. All right, so you might have heard the term, riches are in the niches. Let's choose med spas for this example. I was originally taught that not only should I only work with med spas, but I needed to hyper niche and only work with med spas offering cryotherapy, okay? And then only advertise for the cryotherapy. This left me a little bit paralyzed because I had all these thoughts of niches that I was interested in. And there was a fear that the rapidly changing marketplace might leave me obsolete, in which case I'd have to start over. So that advice did not work for me. The other risk with this advice is that as a business growth specialist, it's your responsibility to nurture and grow a business no matter how they evolve. So if you're super specific and you're rigid in that approach, you're going to lose trust and then you're going to lose clients. All right. Next, I was taught that I shouldn't niche down until I found out which niche had business owners that I could build camaraderie with and whose clientele's pain points I could really resonate with. This left me with hundreds of different paths I could go down and I kind of became stuck in this loop of jumping from one niche to the other, trying to determine which one was easier instead of working on the parts that were difficult and expanding my skill set. <clears throat> there are a few housekeeping things to, dis to consider before you choose your prospecting niches, okay? What's your background? Are you a personal trainer? Are you a qualified plumber? What does your family members do for a living? And have you picked up enough of that lingo to then relate to these business owners easily? Can you position yourself as a hairdresser, marketing for hairdressers? These are the things that are going to set you apart from your competitors and draw more interest in your service. Secondly, second thing to consider is how much money do you need coming into your agency to stay afloat? How many extra or how much extra do you need to then be able to scale? Ideally, the money that you need to stay afloat should come from as many little fish as possible. That way, if something happens, you lose a client, you aren't really scrambling to make up the difference. The money you need to scale, though, will most probably come from a big fish. But once you've started that process, you want to then land enough little fish to sustain that expansion if you were to lose the big fish. Okay. <clears throat> thirdly, oh, sorry, thirdly, once you land that big fish, are you then able to use their name to corner that market? Okay, let me explain. Otto Bayer invented spray foam insulation. If you were to land Otto Bayer, would you then be able to leverage that connection to land 
the local spray foam insulation providers. Does that make sense? All right, the fourth thing to consider. Do you want to land 16 fitness providers in one city and then have your clients competing against each other for the same leads and then be unable to provide optimal results? What would that say about your integrity? Would it work better to work with one provider per area, provide that loyalty to your client and have them less likely to go looking elsewhere for the services that you provide? Sticky clients, scale agencies. All right, last question to answer. What's the blue ocean? Where is the red ocean where all the other sharks are swimming? Most gurus out there are going to teach you to go for specific low-hanging fruit like hairdressers or tow truck companies, small fish that are easy to land and easy to get low-cost results for, and then they're going to call that your blue ocean. All right? The difficulty with that method is that there are now tens of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands agencies going after these niches that are being advertised as low-hanging fruit and blue ocean. I challenge you to think about what makes you unique, okay? If you're a nurse, then IV clinics are low-hanging fruit and blue ocean for you because you understand the product, you understand the process, the business owners, the overhead, and the clientele better than your fellow competitors, if you were to take a little step further and identify IV clinics that are advertising with poor results, you'll be able to hone into where your gold is. If you don't have an easily adaptable background, it's totally fine. You still have a blue ocean that's unique to you. So think about the work you've done in your brand, okay? Who are you? Are you a connector? Are you a warrior? Who are you, okay? Who relates to that the best? Think about all the businesses that are currently advertising on Groupon. Which one or two of them best works with your brand? Start with them, okay? I don't say only go after them, but start with them, okay? After all this internal work, you are still wondering where to start? Start anywhere. Start anywhere. Action, no matter what kind of action, no matter how imperfect, is better than no action at all. Now, lastly, little tip. Most of you guys already know this. Coldalytics, in partnership with the seven-figure agency, have released a report on which niches are most requested for list building. So you're going to start with niches that are being prospected the least or in the middle somewhere, and then you're going to find that you're much more successful in your prospecting. All right, to cover the other technical questions, stay away from the top 20 populated cities in the United States when you first start out. They are being targeted by everyone. And I mean everybody. Everybody in every single country is targeting the biggest cities in the United States. Okay? Your blue ocean is going to sit somewhere between the 21st and 200th most populated cities in the United States. For ease when starting out, I suggest that you start targeting businesses who have been in business for at least six months with a staffing minimum of two employees. All right? Let me check, see if we have any questions. No questions so far. All right, so that is what I suggest when, when it comes to niches. Now, if you're sitting here saying, okay, I came here with a bunch of that questions about niches and you talked around the issue and you didn't answer the issue, I don't have the perfect answer for you. I don't. There is no perfect answer. There's no right or wrong answer for this. Myself, my agency, I work with most niches. Okay, I really do. I do work with most niches. I have niches I love. I really, I really, really love working with coaches. I love working with startups, not for profits. I really enjoy making the marketing plans for them. I love working with those niches. But it doesn't mean that I don't enjoy working with other niches as well. It doesn't mean I don't get amazing results from other niches. I can understand them. I'll tell you, for example, people with solar, all right? You're starting up, some people go, yeah, roofing and solar, quick, easy money. It's not. Often it's going to take you two, three months worth of conversation to land that client. They're not simple to, simple to land. Um, other people say, oh, hairdressers, med spas, you know, alternative medicine. That's where I'm going to go. Alternative medicine, there is 
gold. There's real true gold there. However, it's a very, very common one that's commonly prospected. Okay, so they now know how many people are begging to work with them. So they aren't going to value this you the same. Okay. Now you can absolutely get around that with your imaging, your your text, the the way you're talking to them when you prospect, when you reach out to them. Perfect. Okay. Um dentists. Dentists is another one. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 go after dentists. They have really high ticket offers. It's true. They do have really high ticket offers that they make a lot of profit from. But everybody, a lot of people are going after dentists and they aren't the simplest to close because unless they are kind of small, the decision structure is complicated. You end up having to convince more than one person and talk to a room full of people often just to close a deal like that. Okay. Um, just because they have high ticket offers doesn't mean that they're easy to close. It doesn't mean that that's who you should be targeting when you first start out. Now, if you want to go for somebody that's easy to close, um, not prospected as much, and still has a higher profit margin, think outside the box, okay? So if you want to go for wellness space, who's teaching everybody out there in the holistic medicine space, okay? There are universities universities designed to teach these people and they are putting out 30 40 50 60 students a year they all need help getting their businesses up and running okay so if you were to approach them and instead of saying hey I want to market for you say look I want to offer some free value to your students okay this was actually an idea that was suggested to me by a student it makes sense it's gold um but you know, I want to offer some free value to your students. I want to help build out a strategy on how to launch a business. Okay. And I would like to talk to people about how to one launch two keep, keep that um, consistent client base and then three expand or scale. Okay. These are things that these people aren't being taught. Now go, go anywhere. Think of um, polytechnics. All right public um sorry i'm in the united states so what are they called they're called technical schools i'm not sure but you know where you go to learn to learn a trade right not not just not just the apprenticeships i'm gonna have to find out what the american word is for that one um but they are also training these people up placing them in jobs and giving them skills to start their own businesses or work as contractors, but they aren't giving them the skills that they need to be successful in the marketplace. Okay, so try approaching the schools that are teaching people. It is definitely an untapped market. It, it's very, very untapped. Okay, um, if you'd prefer to just speak to the business owner yourself and not go through that um, kind of like intermediate intermediary position what about stamped concrete all right who out here is prospecting for stamped concrete their profit margins are massive all right who out here is prospecting for people who do gutter repair like not very many of us get taught to go after people like that who out here is prospecting for podiatrists You'd be surprised at what the profit margin for a podiatrist is, especially as they start moving away from taking insurance and become cash-based businesses. Um, who out here is prospecting for limousine companies? Profit margin on a limousine company is ginormous, and it's not that hard to get them results. Um, who out here is prospect? I'm trying try not to give you all my secrets, but you can take my secrets. It's fine. Who, oh, Lash Extension. Lash Extension blew me away. I had no idea how many boutique mom and pop kind of people who had started it. And I didn't realize the profit margin on it. Like the, the equipment that they buy is not very expensive. But to get Lash Extensions or um, things like that is 
super, super expensive. They're making a lot of money. They're just not marketing themselves properly most of the time. Okay. So think about all of those things. Um, that is where I would start when it comes to niches and who to contact and all of those things. Um, and I hope, I hope, hope, hope that this has been very, very helpful. Just a quick reminder about our um, winners from the webinar. We have Rashad joined, who has joined us for the Done For You at This Agency Launch Night program, who got his program fee for free. The Brain Spotting, se brain spotting Session Access winner is Jaid. All right, Jaid, I cannot wait to work with you and Jen in helping you turn your brain into a precision instrument over the next 12 weeks. The go, go high level snapshot winner is Doug Holly. All right. This is truly, truly going to help create the foundation inside your high level to do anything you need to do inside your agency. I think you're going to find it incredibly valuable and reach out to John or John will reach out to you and make sure that you understand what you've got inside there. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for now. Today, we kept it short and sweet, but I hope everybody's enjoying their weekend. If you guys are in Canada, it's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. If you guys are here in the United States, it is Columbus Day tomorrow. So I really hope you're enjoying this time with your family on your long weekend, and we will see you all next week.